there was a class reunion mm -hmm. in Georgia, mm -hmm. and our host was this guy. Do you recognize him? Oh, yeah. Sure, Carter. I'm not, yeah, President Carter. Yeah. 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 Ed, well, right, he had the, and we are the survivors. Oh, all of you. The survivors Quite and the wives. Oh, uh, well, that's with the wives, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But as you can see, the, yeah. the casualties were very substantial. Yeah. Well, I mean, some of them may have... And some of them just naturally... Passed away after the sure. war. Sure. <laughs> that's right. Sure. That's right. My dad, was, my dad was in the war, and he was here in Iceland. Oh, oh is that right? Yeah. That's right. That's right. I yeah. see. That's, uh, but this is nice. This is a good remembrance. But anyway, I so thought you would be amused. Yeah. By that. Well, of course, you know, of course, you know. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Where are you? Uh, let's see. I am. That one. Yeah. Oh, up on the corner there. On the upper corner there. Oh, well, so you're such a nice <laughs> young man. That's right. You're, you're rather thin. You're yeah, just like me. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So you're a serious guy. Serious guy. I can see, but everybody is quite serious. But you know, it was that that saved my life. Because you were with the horse, then you didn't go into the... Well, I I was sent down to, to protect America from the Mexicans that were going to invade, oh. coming through Texas. I see. You know, they're still doing that, I guess. Yes, that's true. <laughs> and uh, then finally, after a few months, they decided we should do other things. Uh, and um, for some reason, the commanding general and I had become rather good friends. Mm -hmm. And he said, one day he said, Paul, do you like this duty? And I said, no, I really don't care for it. I, might, I, might, I was within his headquarters. Mm -hmm. I said, I prefer duty with troops. Mm -hmm. And I can remember his words. He said, of course you do, my son. <laughs> <laughs> and that night, I was on orders to, Virginia, to the state of Virginia, uh -huh. where they put me on a troop ship and sent me to Europe. Uh -huh. But when I arrived, uh, my army specialty number was horse unit commander, and they had no horse units. Mm -hmm. I arrived in time for the Battle of the Bulge, oh, okay. Okay. but they didn't have any place to put me. I see. Because they didn't have any horse units. Right, my goodness. So I sat around for oh, the worst part of it, mm -hmm. about three or four weeks, mm -hmm. and then, then, I, then I went went into action. But by that time, the Germans were on the run to the Rhine, and, mm -hmm. and our Russian friends were coming to meet us. Mm -hmm. I see that. So on and so forth. But anyway, I, I well, these excuse are, me for what actually, I it's that, so. no, it's, it's more like uh, these are the kind of rich gems that we need to have in the story. Oh, is that so, right? Yes, of course. But we'll see. We'll see what we get around sure. to, how much you have time for. We have about two, two hours time. We don't have to spend two hours, but we have that much time. But um, the reason why I'm telling you that is that you will, so you know, you know, you know that when you, you know, to draw things, when, when you need to, you want to be able to draw things to a conclusion. We want to be able to draw things to a conclusion while we still have time. <laughs> oh, sure. So Oop. that's, that's it. And now it's about a quarter after uh, 10. And perhaps you could put this someplace else. Yeah, we're good with light and sound. And we should be safe with one and a half hour. Okay. Yeah, it's, it okay. says two hours here, but you know, technology, okay. you know. Yeah, I right. would say like the right. safe frame right. would be one and a half hours. And this may just wind up being, you know, half an hour. You know? mm -hmm. I mean, after he cuts. You know. mm -hmm. see. So you tell me when we're ready and I'll... <coughs> I'm I'll already begin. shooting and uh, yeah, okay, just uh, so whatever to that. I think at the beginning you have to have it on me, because I'm okay. going to be <laughs> introducing Paul, right? All right. Right. Yes. So yes, I'm, I'm really, really happy that we could uh, meet with you. Uh, today, Paul. And um, uh, Paul jo uh, Johnson is, uh, is uh, a friend of Ardvis. We have many friends, but there are a few uh, so uh, generous and so helpful as uh, Paul Johnson has been. Um, now, I know that, and we've had a chance to be together uh, on, a, on a couple of occasions. We've had lunch together and, and met and discussed matters. 
and um, I'm grateful for that. But uh, there are others that have missed out on this opportunity, both at work and uh, also uh, amongst the invested investors at Arvis. Mm -hmm. So um, Bjartney, the, uh, our co-founder, uh, thought it would be a good idea for for us to have this uh, this discussion. I and, see. Yes, mm -hmm. and uh, what. What we would like to know is actually all about you. <laughs> all and about All about you. Many things about you. Many things about you. And it, perhaps it would be best even to begin... Do I have time to call my lawyer? <laughs> <laughs> I see. Well, actually, Paul is a corporate lawyer. <laughs> so he has practiced <laughs> law for many years in America. So uh, uh, we'll just leave it up to you what you think mm -hmm. is, is uh, safe and, and best. <laughs> So, but if you can begin just telling us like, where you were born. Well, I was born in Grand Forks, North Dakota, in a, in a uh, community where a fairly large number of Icelanders had settled some years before, including my, my father and his family. They came from Skagafjord, the I see, uh, here I in Iceland. I see, I see, I see. So you have Icelandic roots, but you were born in America. I was born. I was born. Yes. Mm -hmm. And did you did you stay in America, or did your did your family come to Iceland uh, in your early years? Well, through um, there are several stories, but uh, my father at a very early age, he was five years old when he when he. Went, went with his mother to North Dakota from Iceland. And uh, later he was able to get into the University of North Dakota. Mm. And from there he was invited to go in to enter politics. Mm -hmm. So... Really? As a... well, not... He no. was... because he was... Uh, uh, well, he wasn't running for the presidency. No, except presidency. He could be. Right. He could be a politician. He could be, but a he politician. couldn't be a president. Right. <laughs> so he was elected attorney general of the state of North Dakota, oh. because then the state was just filled with all kinds of corrupt oh. and, um, entities. In any event, he um, went from there to the Supreme Court of North Dakota, mm -hmm. attorney general, Supreme Court. Then the University of Illinois mm -hmm. in, in, in the south of Chicago mm -hmm, mm -hmm. needed a lawyer. And one of them, one, one of their directors of, that is, of the university, had seen uh, something about my father in the newspaper somewhere. And, uh, this man might make a good, uh, a good lawyer for the university. So they invited him to go there. So I was really uh, what we called a university brat. Oh. <laughs> the, my father was a professor of law. They made him a professor at the university, I see, I see. as well as the legal counsel. I see. And uh, that's a really nice environment for a kid to grow up in, right. I would have bet. And as it was, very much so, because one of the early visitors to our home, this was in North Dakota, mm -hmm. was Franklin D. Roosevelt. Mm -hmm. And Roosevelt was at that time... To your home? Mm, Goodness. And he, uh, Roosevelt was Assistant Secretary of the Treasury. Mm -hmm. And he and my father began, hit it off very well. Mm -hmm. So later, and I, can, I still remember this, I was uh, eight years old. The telephone rang, we were having dinner. The call was from Washington, D.C. It was from the president. He wanted to know if my father would act as a representative of Iceland at the 1930 celebration of the millennium of the Icelandic Althing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, that sounds important. so that was my first trip mm -hmm. to Iceland. Oh, really? Yes. So you were, were, you, so you were eight years old? I was eight years old. And I yeah. see. So you went my, with just your dad or did the... My father, my mother, and me. Okay. And I. Okay. 
Uh, and that uh, uh, was that a long stay, a short, very short stay, or that was for um, uh, the uh, the celebration, the centennial was held, my millennium was held in uh, Thing Vedler, mm -hmm. which is not far from Reykjavik, as mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, Actually, there may be people all over the world that will be watching this one day, so it's good to mention. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> Not right. far from Reykjavik, right? That's right. That's right. So, and uh, the reason I've been coming back ever since. Mm -hmm. I came back here to find my wife. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. Yeah. Just uh, one question about uh, that tr uh, first trip here. Uh, did. Uh, did you have friends? I'm sorry. Did did you did you have relatives here that you were able to visit during that time? Absolutely none that I remember. Okay. The, okay. the only person I remember meeting here, other than my, of course, being with my parents, was the king of Denmark. Okay. Well, that's another. We were, we, were invited, we were invited to sit at his table. Okay, okay, okay. That's interesting. Of course, then you know, Iceland was under Denmark at that mm -hmm. time. Right. Yeah. Um, what was the reason that your your mother moved to North Dakota or South Dakota? Did you say? Well, my and uh, North Dakota. North Dakota. <laughs> That's a marvelous question. They went to North Dakota simply because a few years before my father and his to be and the, his mother and so on, before they came, some Icelander from Canada had crossed the border and the, the, the Dakota. You see, Dakota, the Dakota, the Dakota Territory mm -hmm. was not a state. Oh, in 1930? Oh, no, that was when I was born. That was I was born in, in 1921. I see, I see. And it uh, wasn't a state. It was not a state, okay, it was a territory. Okay, that's interesting too. Sure. So, uh, you know, they, they felt they could get by with just about anything, do anything they wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And when there really were no restrictions okay. on immigration, Okay. As a okay. territory. I see, I see. So there were quite a few Icelanders. I see, I see. And um, well, my father and his family were among them. But the reason they left Iceland in the first place is that is, is what I, I was there, was, was life difficult in Iceland at that time? And As I understand, it was very difficult. It was very difficult. And there was a lot of people that were. There, there had been a lot of bad weather. Oh, okay. The, uh, the country was dependent on agriculture and fishing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And both were were uh, were badly affected by the weather mm -hmm. and so forth. So mm -hmm. anyone who could mm -hmm. afford it mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. took a I got on the first boat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see. I see. So I could uh, uh, perhaps the because it was just a territory. There was also, you know, there weren't the rules and regulations that came later when it became a state, and that's perhaps the reason why there was that much corruption that you were talking about. That, exactly. I see. I see. I see. Mm -hmm. I see. So yes. it was good. To, it was a good uh, environment for a person who wants to. To I mean, if, you know, it depends on your attitude. I suppose some people decided to break the law, and some people like to try or, or to study it and, That's right. <laughs> and enforce it. So your dad was fortunately on that side. That's right. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. And uh, you were influenced by him. And as a result, well, I've been coming back to Iceland ever since. Okay. Okay. Nice. My father and I came here from Norway, leaving my my mother was Norwegian. Okay. And we left her in Norway, and we came here for a, just a week. And uh, ever since. Your mother was Norwegian, so so your mother went from Norway to I to Iceland. Well, actually, from Minnesota, because her her people had emigrated. Before my father, his, oh, okay, his okay. family, and then your your dad got there. And that, that that's but he met her, in yeah. in South Dakota. She was a nurse in, in North Dakota. In North Dakota, for yeah. me. <laughs> okay, in North Dakota. Mm -hmm. I see, I see, I see. Okay, all right. So you've been to uh, you went to you visited Iceland many times uh, after that, and this was just uh, because you were you were. Uh, Connected uh, because you had roots here, or because well, I, you, you felt uh, 
You know, I, don't, I always. What was the? I felt, I felt close twice. You felt close, reason. but I mean, it was your, you came with your family on a, uh, on, on quite a few occasions. Yeah, but the first time, well, the first time I came with my mother and father. Yeah. The second time I came with my father, leaving my mother in Norway. Right. The third time. I came by myself. Okay. And the fourth time. I came by myself, but took back my wife. Okay, okay, and you took her back to where? In, where to you Chicago. Living? To Chicago. Okay, and already by that time I'm out of law school. Okay, already you were. You were. I uh, was. I was out of the army and so on. And you, you had started a career already mm -hmm. as a lawyer. Yes. I see. I see. Okay, so how was it meeting your wife? Uh, you met her here, mm -hmm. right? And uh, was she waiting for you? <laughs> <laughs> well. It, I don't think she even gave me a good look. Oh no! But how did you manage to win her? I think I just got her in a weak moment. Okay, 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 okay. But so, so somehow she's remained weak. I guess all these years. Yeah. <laughs> right. I see. Okay, and she's in good health. Your wife? She's, yes. Yeah, she's good. Okay, that's good. That's good. Matter of fact, she's working. She's working. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So um, you took her with you back to to America, right? And to you, Chicago. And to Chicago, and uh, that's where you had begun a law practice. You're talking about how? Uh, what year was this? Oh, that was in forty. Oh, wait a minute. That was in nineteen. I'm trying to remember the. The year. It was 49. I 49. Think. You graduated law school in, in 48. 48. How many? How, you, 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 were, you were in the service, though. You were in the armed services, and we, you weren't going to school during that time. It was, no. No, nobody was. No, I'd had, one, I'd had one year. I had graduated from the university mm -hmm. before I went in the army. Oh, I see. Okay. And I had one, year, one semester of law school. I see, I see, and I see. Okay, so you already had so gotten started. I started. I see, I see. And then I came back and just uh, I took a really crash course. We just went right through. All uh, right. Do you think it was helpful? Well, first of all, I heard you were an officer during, during mm -hmm. the Second World War. A special kind of officer <laughs> that you were something to do with horses? Well, I was, uh, I was commissioned. I'm very proud of this. I was, I was in the last horse cavalry officer candidate class that the U.S. probably will ever have. That's amazing. Unless, unless, unless international matters get really bad, I can't, I can't see them bringing back the cavalry. So, so you were trained to ride horses. Yes. Mm -hmm. And and you and you had that responsibility during the, during the war. Well, for the uh, and. Until I'd been in Europe for a, a month or so, and then they found me. And okay. Put, but I, I served in in a reconnaissance troop of, attached to an infantry division. Mm -hmm. The uh, means of transportation was an armored car. Mm -hmm. We had I had no transition training of any kind. Mm -hmm. I went really from the horse. Mm -hmm. To the armored car, uh -huh. and I was with that armored car company troop for uh, about or close to a month before I discovered that the engine was in the rear. I mean, oh my I, they, yes, and not in the front. I see. So that was another crash course. Oh yeah, <laughs> you didn't really learn everything. Nice, not right away. <laughs> I see. I see. I see. Did you? Did, were you actually near where they were, or involved with any of the hostilities? Oh yes. I was, oh, I see. I see. I so. have a few battle stars. Oh my goodness! I see. I see. I see. So you, you had that kind of experience. Yeah. I had nothing. Nothing. Uh, I was only mildly injured once or twice. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, that was fortunate because in, in the cavalry we still used the same old tactics. We were on the move all the time. 
Mm. So it's pretty hard <laughs> to find right. us and shoot at us. I see, I see. I see. Is anybody really prepared for battle, do you think? You know, any young person that... I mean, for what it's really like, is anybody really prepared for that, I wonder? Not really. Not really. Mm. So it's a real shock, isn't it? I mean, it's a real shock to anyone, isn't it? Wouldn't it be? Well, yes, it, it is. It's, uh, everybody reacts differently. We had uh, a few suicides. Such things. And, yes, sir, yes, sir. Uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was a no time of picnic. Mm -hmm. No, I see. So you have to have a strong constitution to be able to get through that. And well, yes, and I think you had to have some interests. You had to have some goal. Mm -hmm. It was something that you were going to do when this was over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Something you could think about and dream mm -hmm. about and plan mm -hmm. for and so mm -hmm. on. I see, I see. I see. So that must have been, uh, but it's, you know, I'm sure for it, it is anybody that's seen a uh, bit on the battlefield, I'm sure that the, that, that leaves, un, you know, indelible me uh, memories. Oh, yes. So that's that's part of your foundation, you know, for the rest of your life. Now, may I tell you a very short story? Sure. I was a second lieutenant for a long time. Mm -hmm. And one day, and, and we had liberated some uh, prisoners that the Germans had taken. Mm -hmm. they, were, they were from the Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And spoke no English, and we had. Mm. Well, I had one. And fortunately, in America, you know, there are all every language is represented somewhere. That's right. And uh, mm -hmm. so I had no problem with translation, translations, and so on. Mm -hmm. In any event, one evening I was, I was uh, in charge of the guard, mm -hmm. and one of my men was from the Ukraine. He mm -hmm. didn't speak a word of English, mm -hmm. but we we called him Charlie, okay. and we put him in a. We finally gave him a uniform. Yeah, we put him in a U.S. uniform. Mm -hmm. He was a, a no stripes, of course, mm -hmm. but he was a good soldier, so we promoted him. Okay. Now he wasn't getting any money. We gave him a couple of stripes. Okay. Okay. Then one day, my men said, one of my men came in, said, Lieutenant, he should be on guard duty too. He should, you know, he's getting a free ride. That's right. Okay. So we gave him a rifle, mm -hmm. put him on guard duty. Mm -hmm. And that evening, one of my men came in and said, Colonel Feldman is here to see you. Feldman was the command, was in charge of our particular unit. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. And I said, Charlie's out there, isn't he? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Feldman came in and said, where's the lieutenant? And then he saw me, walked over. Here it comes. He said, Lieutenant, are you responsible for that the guard out there? That's right. And I said, I am. He said, what's your name? I told him. How long have you been a second lieutenant? I said, forever. <laughs> he said, I'm going to see that you're promoted. Marvelous. He said, the soldier you have on guard duty out there mm -hmm. is the first one I have encountered who followed the rules and refused to speak to me. Oh! <laughs> I see, I see. <laughs> okay, so it's Providence so, was on your side. Yeah, so he That's looked right. at me and how, how long have you been on? I have long promoted me. That is really great. Oh, because <laughs> That's really great. So, uh, I see. So, not only do you have to have a vision to get through the armed services, but you also have to have good fortune. Yeah, you have to be lucky. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's very good. Very good. So, after the, uh, after the uh, war, you went back to school, mm -hmm. and then you, uh, when you graduated, you became a lawyer. You met your wife back here in Iceland <coughs> after that, correct? Mm -hmm. After that, and you came back with her. And then uh, you, you, well, you, were st you, you had lived in Chicago. You, were, you, had, you had been living in Chicago, and you came back with her, correct? Uh, yeah, that's correct. Yes. That's correct. Mm -hmm. 
And then, did, did you work for a firm, or, or were you... I worked for a firm. You worked for a firm. Okay. As a matter of fact, my father had left the, the University of Illinois uh, during the war, mm -hmm. and Roosevelt had asked him to take the position of, of a director of government reports to, of uh, oh, um, coordinating the activities of various federal agencies mm -hmm. and the US and the military mm -hmm. people and um, so anyway and that was um, So anyway, I, 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 I was, I went to his old law office. He had died in the meantime. Your, your father had passed away? Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. Okay, what year was that? Do you, or like, that, you're, that you went to his office? Well, that, that, would, that would have been in 19, about 1950. 1950, okay, mm -hmm. okay, all right. No, I was born in 1950. <laughs> oh, oh, really? Okay, but anyway, okay, yes, well. okay. There you go. Okay, so that's... Uh, yeah, there was a lawyer waiting for you. That's right. <laughs> that's right. So, um, okay, so that's when you went to your law firm. Okay. Right. And uh, do you mind telling us the name of the firm? Uh, no, it was... Uh, it had been Johnson & Short. Then it, did, then it was very briefly Johnson Brundage & Short. Mm -hmm. Then my father died, and then Brundage died. Okay. And uh, so then it was Charles Short Jr. and Associates. I see. Okay. And so on and so on and okay, so forth. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, did you immediately start working as a corporate lawyer? Or how, how, what, what was your... Uh, how no, did things go from... I was... I, was, I think all, all of my life really I had been lucky. And... The firm had a client whose name was John MacArthur. And John MacArthur had a small insurance company called Bankers Life and Casualty. Mm -hmm. And the firm that, that had taken me on was their, their legal advisor. Yes. So um, anyway, I came to know MacArthur quite well, and I liked him. Mm -hmm. And he had very interesting friends. Mm -hmm. His brother, Charlie MacArthur, was uh, married to Helen Hayes, the, the actress. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, MacArthur, I won't dwell on this, but MacArthur is really the man who can, to, who, to whom most credit for health and hospitalization insurance uh, should be given for the existence of it in America. And um, I was with him, MacArthur, and putting, well, I was doing whatever he told me to do mm -hmm. as a lawyer, you know. Mm -hmm. Spent a lot of time in courts all over the, the United States because. The concept of health and hospitalization insurance was looking brand new. Mm -hmm. They couldn't understand how we could do this. Mm -hmm. We showed them. Was it? Did it exist in other countries yet? England. Okay. Okay. So you mm -hmm. had a, a sort uh, of a model. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. England. They, it was. Uh, they had what we we called uh, the womb to tomb plan. Okay. Okay. Yeah, right. which included okay. hospitalization. That should do it. So <laughs> That's right. Boom to tomb. And uh, so I was with with MacArthur, and as a matter of fact, to, I may be going back to see I, MacArthur is, has been long gone. I see. But uh, but the MacArthur Foundation that that he that he endowed. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I drew I drew the will. Mm -hmm. They uh, has uh, literally uh, billions. I think uh, about three billion dollars. Mm -hmm. So he was very, very successful in his insurance insurance business, extremely correct? Extremely so. Yes. Okay, and then he established this foundation. Mm -hmm. I see. Yes, I see. He, uh, solely. He created the foundation by will. 
So he he controlled he controlled his business and the insurance company and all the funds mm -hmm. until his death. Mm -hmm. And then upon death, the MacArthur Foundation came into existence. Oh, I see. And everything went into that. I see. I see. There you go. So you worked with him uh, with his insurance company. Yes. Mm -hmm. But then uh, after his demise, did you? Um, were you in any way connected to the foundation? Um, no. No. I, I have. Um, I expect to be calling them one of these days, and uh, they'll have my name. They they know who I am. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, mm -hmm. um, what, so did as a uh, so you were his lawyer, yes. so to speak. Mm -hmm. or, or for his insurance company. So, in other words, you dedicated all of your time, is, or did you have other? Well, it was um, responsibilities as well. When I was with MacArthur, I no, actually, it was a strange relationship. I was the for a, for a t short time, I was the general counsel mm -hmm. for for Bankers Life and Casualty. Mm -hmm. Then. Um, I, I really didn't care for it. I, I, I liked multiple clients. I, mm -hmm. I didn't. I wasn't comfortable. Mm -hmm. They were doing representing just one person all the time. Mm -hmm. So I asked MacArthur if I could open an office downtown, mm -hmm. and uh, just come out when needed, mm -hmm. and that was fine with him. Okay. The, um, the offices of the insurance company were of his company. Uh, were. Uh, in the suburbs, mm -hmm. so uh, so well, that's how that's mm -hmm. that started, mm -hmm. and I have no, I have not uh, done any legal work for the foundation, and I don't really know anyone there well. I, I have oh, a few okay. names. I okay. I spoke to them on the telephone, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and I I will be talking to them, and I'm hoping that they'll be interested. In, mm -hmm. And some things we're doing here. Yes, yes, you've spoken to you've spoken of that before. So mm -hmm. we're we're uh, we're here. That's a, that's something that you know that might be uh, that might work out also for for Ardvis. You know, for our, they may be interested in supporting our our enterprise. Mm -hmm. So um, you you stayed. So your your uh, your work as a lawyer. In, in Chicago, lasted for how many years? Never really counted them. I'm, uh, I've, uh, well, and really until I came to, I, I came to, to I, I moved to Iceland to, um, about seven years ago. Not such a long time ago. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, Okay. So up to that time, I was practicing law. And oh, really? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Of course, during this, during the larger part of this period, I was also on the Icelandic Council, and uh, and that and that of course, and that took a fair amount of my time. In in what capacity were you working in the Icelandic Council? I was the council. Well, you were the council. The councillor. The councillor. I, <laughs> I was. I was <laughs> vice council. I was vice council, then I became council. Then they decided that since the, all of the other Nordic countries were represented by councils general, I should be a council general. So I okay, okay. So I retired for that position as council general. So did, did that took you also to to visit? Uh, I that see. brought me here constantly. No, oh, I see. There was a lot to do. Yeah. I see. Was that a volunteer? Is, is that a uh, volunteer job? Was it? Is that a, is that an honorary position or is well it's hard to answer that question directly because well first of all my title is honorary mm -hmm. the uh, there were career and honorary councils I see I see I was honorary council mm -hmm. but in as much as Iceland had no career councils mm -hmm. oh I see you know it put me in a slightly different status. Mm -hmm. And the the others who mm -hmm. who were in a different rank mm -hmm. in their in their consular corps. 
in what ways did you uh, impact on this nation, would you say? Oh, I'm sorry. Through, yeah. through your responsibility. But were my responsibilities? Yeah, what kind of job did you do for it? Well, virtually anything, you, everything you could think of. The, um, what did I do? I did a, a large variety of things. Mm -hmm. And, um, or oh, a great many, of course, just answering questions about Iceland. Mm -hmm. Then, also when when the city of Chicago, I mean, this was all in Chicago. Yes. So when the city of Chicago had uh, had uh, days in which it honored foreign guests and so mm -hmm. on, I was I, I, I would be I would be invited as the representative of Iceland. Mm -hmm. I see. And uh, it was very pleasant. I see. I it see. opened every every door to me. I see. I see. Yes, well, I, I, I you know, just like with the, and, and, uh, and, uh, and the ambassadors, they have to be, and uh, it would, you know, like the Emperor of Japan and, and uh, Queen of England, and these people, the people who are in those positions have to be really exemplary. So mm -hmm. you and your wife must have, must have uh, um, been a real uh, 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 blessing, you know, for, for uh, I'm, I'm not going to ask you, ask you to answer this. Well, we, <laughs> had, we had to behave ourselves. But you, yeah, that's the way to put it. That's right. That's right. So you really had to, to really uphold the standards. And, and uh, you know, it's very, very, uh, it is an honor. It certainly mm -hmm. is an honor to be chosen for that position. Well, I certainly thought so. And, um, and I think most people that, uh, that to have the good fortune of having, of being named to that, that activity uh, recognizes it as an honor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you have, uh, so now I think, uh, so you have, uh, well, you have roots in America, and uh, uh, you also have, uh, uh, it sounds like you also have deep roots here, because I mean, all the time you were thinking, I mean, oftentimes you were thinking about the, this nation and serving this nation of mm -hmm. Iceland. So that's a lot for a man to be proud of. <laughs> yeah. Yes, 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 yes. And you have a son, I understand. He's also uh, yes. mm -hmm. practicing as a lawyer. Right. Right. And, he, and you have a daughter too, don't you? Right. Right. And she's a geologist. She's a geologist. Okay. So mm -hmm. some other interest. <laughs> I see. So they're, and they're both in America. Aren't right. They? Yes. Okay. Okay. And uh, I, I know I've met your son. So mm -hmm. Knut. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. right. So he's in, in California, right? Yes, mm -hmm. he's uh, San Diego. San Diego, yeah, it's a, it's a nice town. Right? Mm -hmm. I like San Diego. And then your, your daughter is in Utah, isn't she? Right. right, Salt Lake City. Salt Lake City. And so she's also got some ties with China somehow. With she? what? China? Yes, she... Uh, well, it's very indirect, but the uh, she, uh, as I think I mentioned, is a geologist, mm -hmm. and she her office was was in the um, and the in the executive um, section of the of the Utah State Government mm -hmm. in Salt Lake City. Mm -hmm. So she worked closely with the governor, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the the present governor. Mm -hmm is now U.S. Ambassador to China. Oh, I see. Okay. Appointed fairly recently. Mm -hmm. So the thought is that, um, that when we have something something specific, mm -hmm. and I, I, mm -hmm. I feel that you have something very specific mm -hmm. uh, to present, mm -hmm. then we will ask for the assistance mm -hmm. of the of uh, the, the American ambassador, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. my daughter will have no problem getting that, mm -hmm. and getting and, and effecting an introduction to to mm -hmm. the right people mm -hmm. in the embassy, and with the thought to having them assist in stimulating interest in the Chinese mm -hmm. in coming here. Mm -hmm. So this is you know, and when I when we began our conversation this morning. I mentioned how um, you've uh, 
there are few people who have been uh, as uh, as generous and as helpful as uh, as you have been. And um, <clears throat> uh, but I didn't explain what how. And uh, w one way is that you do have access to to uh, people, uh, friends, or through family uh, that uh, that you've. Uh, uh, pointed out uh, to us as as uh, people who uh, might be interested in helping us in our project, mm -hmm. and so we have you know we have just like you we have the <coughs> public interest at heart, mm -hmm. and um, so that's another wonderful reason why we you know I think we are kind of hit it off and you know uh, want to work together. Yes, well I I look forward to it. I I like what I've. I'm very interested in, in what you are doing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I've I have been here long enough, and I've heard enough from people from other countries talking about their problems, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I, so mm -hmm. that I can't have, avoid feeling that that Iceland uh, can be of uh, a, can be a significant factor mm -hmm. in easing some of the serious problems that people are, are experiencing. I think so. I think so too. Mm -hmm. Especially if we have people like yourself, Paul, you know, <laughs> oh, come on. on our side. So Tell my wife that. Yeah, okay, <laughs> she'll hear it. <laughs> but uh, um, I mean that uh, because uh, but our founder, uh, one of our founders, I should say we have two, uh, Bjartney himself uh, is uh, just this kind of person also. So we are looking for people, you know, uh, we are uh, finding people who are, uh, who do have uh, the public interest at heart and, and uh, are inspired to, to not only uh, find ways to succeed themselves, but, but also to, to uh, see others succeed as well. And there's a lot that we can do and we, we, uh, we're, uh, uh, looking forward to to working together. Yes, well, I certainly am looking forward to that. So I I want to uh, thank you, and uh, uh, for this time that you can spend with us uh, uh, this morning. Uh, oh, not at all. If, if I can be of any help, I'd be delighted. Okay, you'll, you will be will be in touch mm -hmm. on many occasions. Good. Yeah. Thank you very much, Paul. Indeed. Thank you. Yeah. Went all right, did it? Yeah, it was perfect. Yeah. Okay. So I'm sure there was many, many, many stories we didn't hear. <laughs> would you care for a cup of coffee? Uh, I personally don't drink coffee, but a glass of water would be fine. Cold, cold mm -hmm. glass of water. Would you like coffee? Yeah, I'll have coffee. Here we go. <laughs> I just recently started having What coffee. do you like in it? Oh, just whatever. I just recently started drinking coffee, so I'm... I haven't developed any... So you're a trainee? <laughs> yeah, just... Yeah. Black or with milk. Any, anyway. No, be fine. What did you say? You oh, it's just water. Cold water. Just cold water. Yes. And...